Welcome to the Manhattan Project. This is day 17. Tonight, John and I ventured to the Angelica Theater. Let's go take a look at that journey. John and I saw two different movies. I alone went to go see Menasha. Menasha, which, by the way, is a little Sundance movie, kind of in the mumblecore vein, about a Hasidic Jewish man who, after the death of his wife, has a lot of trouble sort of readjusting. The community says he can't raise his son alone, and they're pressuring him to remarry, but that's not a choice he's ready to make. It's kind of a character study. Take a look at the trailer. <laughs> What were your expectations going into this film, Evan? So, I had some interesting expectations going in, especially because I had been primed that this movie was potentially in the mumblecore subgenre, which is something I know a lot about. I'll get into that a little bit later. And also just the fact that it's about sort of this somewhat undiscovered community of uh, Haredi or Hasidic Jews living in Brooklyn, which is a place I just moved to. So I was very intrigued. <laughs> Menasha is a sensitive and affecting portrait of a very unique anti-hero, which ultimately tells a story that I haven't seen in a while on film. So before I get too deep in the review, I would like to talk about the Mumblecore aspects a little bit. Like I said, I was primed that this might be a Mumblecore movie, and honestly, I was a little bit suspicious. People tend to throw that term around a lot anytime you're talking about a movie which is low budget, or doesn't have much plot, or has improvised dialogue, stuff like that. In the case of a real Mumblecore movie, those elements are there, but it's something a little bit different that defines it, something more in the spirit. Mumblecore movies tend to be about a few subject matters. Sometimes they're romantic. A lot of times they're about people who are in arrested development of a sort. So in addition to some of those technical factors, you usually have one of those factors built in. And also there tends to be a tight-knit group of filmmakers that have made Mumblecore movies. But as you can possibly get, it's really hard to define what exactly makes a Mumblecore movie. For example, the movie Primer by Shane Carruth is low budget and made by a filmmaker who's worked with Mumblecore filmmakers, but that doesn't really make it mumblecore. Anyway, before I jump off a bridge, I'll say this. I was surprised to learn that Menasha really does have that mumblecore feeling to it. It just really feels like the work of a filmmaker who was kind of going off the fly and working very low budget, but for this purpose of a really in-your-face, sensitive portrait of a person who is in a state of crisis. So let's talk about the, the title character, Menasha. One thing that was very interesting to me in this movie is how potentially unlikable he is. We have a lot of sympathy for him. We feel bad that his wife died. We feel bad that he's not allowed to raise his son. We feel bad that he has trouble at work. But then again, we also see the way that he responds to all these challenges in his life. And we see him be rude to people. We see him be self-absorbed. We see him sort of have a bad instincts as a father. On the one hand, he's really nice to his kid. On the other hand, yeah, maybe he shouldn't be taking care of his kid alone. He's not really had a chance to learn to be a single father. How much is that on him and how much is that on the community for not trying to help him in that way? It's tough to say. But I was struck off the bat, just to the extent that this movie isn't like, hey, it's called Menasha, it's about a guy named Menasha, and you're going to love him. We're just going to show you how life has been mean to him and you should feel sad for him. No, it really is about a person who is in this particular moment in their life and probably needs to learn a lesson if they hope to grow. Another aspect of the film is that it covers this Orthodox Jewish community. I myself am Jewish, but that doesn't mean I know that much about people who practice this form of the religion. It's not something I grew up in. And a decent amount of the movie does involve not suspending disbelief, but just sort of putting your head down and trying to put yourself in the shoes of a person living in this community where a single father is not even allowed to raise a son. He's required by the Jewish law to get married again so that he can have a proper household for a son. And if you spend too much time thinking about that and how different that is from your own life, you might be alienated from the movie and you might miss out on some of the more universal aspects of it, just sort of the more basic commentary on fatherhood, 
on dealing with your in-laws, on dealing with grief, that sort of thing. Personally, I thought the movie did a really good job at not beating you over the head with that stuff. It doesn't have much exposition at all. It doesn't have much long discussions of stuff. It just gives you enough information so you can literally understand what the debates are in any scene, but it keeps most of the conflicts interpersonal. A lot of the conflict in this movie is between Menasha and his ex-brother-in-law, I guess, his deceased wife's brother, who's the guy taking care of his kid and who has very little respect in him or trust that he can be a good father. So A, I thought the movie did a pretty good job at depicting the religious aspects without being didactic or confusing. And also, I just kind of like the flow of the movie. It's able to use an event, the memorial of his wife's death, as a slightly climactic event. That's one thing people complain about in Mumblecore movies is that nothing happens. This movie, I thought, does a pretty good job at nothing happening. I know this movie was shot over the course of two years, and I imagine there's a lot of extra footage, which allowed the filmmakers to then pare it down to just kind of like the best scenes that are, you know, subtle enough to be realistic, but have enough going on in them to either be conflict or a moment of joy or whatever else in his life. And once again, with the larger structure of leading up to his wife's memorial service, this potential test of him as a single father. He wants to use that chance to prove to the community that he can be a good guy. And it works out in kind of the sad way that most of the stuff in this movie does. This isn't a movie that has a real happy ending or a real profound ending. It's mostly just a movie where you see a person kind of struggling and his closest moment of sort of emotional catharsis, his most movie moment, is just when he confesses to a couple of co-workers. He works at a supermarket and there's some uh, Hispanic janitorial staff there and he talks to them about his guilt over the death of his wife, that he didn't really love her that much and how that has been part of his process of trying to get over her death. This is a totally random comment. But it is interesting for me in these types of movies to see what kind of symbolism gets built in. Especially when a movie like this is so concerned with realism, you wonder when you see something if it's coincidence or if it's like intentional imagery. And there was an aspect of this movie that had to do with clothing. You might know that a lot of Orthodox Jewish men will wear hats and long black coats. In this movie, he typically does not do that. He only does that um, on a holiday and at a memorial service. And the rest of the time, he's just wearing a yarmulke um, and also uh, another piece of Jewish carb. And at one point a guy calls him out on that. He's like, why aren't you wearing the hat? And he doesn't say anything. And I saw a bunch of different meanings for this. I saw a part of it as being like his grief process because you know, he's, he's, he's sort of taking himself out of the community in a certain way. Part of me saw it as a little form of rebellion. Part of me just saw it as, well, he doesn't have the time to wear that long stuff because he's usually at work. When you work in the supermarket, you don't have to wear the hat indoors and stuff when you're picking up boxes and things. So maybe I read into that way too much, but that's the kind of weird thing where if you saw the movie and you want to comment your opinion on the potential meaning of his clothing, that would be cool and we could chat about it. On the whole, Menasha is like cream soda. It's not the most normal. You've already done this metaphor. Cream, cream soda? soda? again? Yeah. No, I have not. What? You have 15... Reviews you can check. I've not used cream soda for any of them. So what you're saying it's good and, and interesting because it's not a flavor you're used to. It's pretty unique, and when you find it, you know it's not necessarily something you want to drink every day. But when you do get it, it's it's a decent, refreshing perspective. Yes. So now go great. find the review where I already used cream soda. <laughs> I just know how your mind works. Three out of four, maybe three and a half at best. Three out of four. That's what I figured. Thank you guys so much for watching. This is the Manhattan Project. So we're gonna be back at this. Tomorrow, and, and the, the next, next day, day, and then the, the next day, day and then the next day. day. <laughs>